Hello, everybody, and welcome to another OpenShift Commons briefing. This time, we have some of the engineering team with us from um, Red Hat to talk about Quay 3.1, um, the most recent release, and some of the things that are coming um, and the new features there, as well as what's on the roadmap. So we have Bill Diedelbach and Tom McQuay, McKay with us um, from the engineering team. I'm going to let them introduce themselves and um, do a little bit of a demo, and we'll have live Q&A at the end. So um, please take it away, Bill. Okay. Thanks, Diane. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Bill Diedelbach. Um, I'm part of the Quay engineering team. Uh, I've got Tom here as well. Tom, you want to say hello? Hello, everyone. Tom McKay uh, on the engineering team for Quay. Cool. So what we'll do today is just go through kind of a real quick view of what Quay is for folks who maybe have not heard of Quay. Um, but we want to spend most of our time talking specifically about what we've just released in the 3.1 um, version that just came out a few weeks ago. Um, so just a quick uh, primer on Quay itself. Um, Quay is Red Hat's enterprise container registry product. Um, we offer Quay in really two forms. Uh, there's the hosted version, Quay.io, as well as um, as a containerized product from Red Hat that you can run on premise um, in, on, on a public cloud or in your own in your own data centers. And really, Quay was built with the intention to be run at enterprise scale. Um, it was built with security in mind, um, really built with scale um, and, and as much focus on automation as possible. So. Um, Quay's been around for a bunch of years. It's pretty battle-hardened, and, and we run Quay.io at a pretty massive scale. So um, we we believe that Quay is Quay.io is the second biggest hosted registry on the internet today. Um, we have hundreds of thousands of users, and we serve up millions of containers on on Quay.io every every day. Um, it's a pretty it's a pretty big dynamic environment. And, uh, and we're, you know, we're now seeing a lot of clients starting to run it in-house, not at the same scale, but enjoying a lot of the benefits of what Quay.io can do on-premise. Um, one of the really exciting things that we're in the process of doing right now is actually open sourcing Quay. Um, Quay currently is still closed source, but we're changing that as fast as we can. Um, and hopefully uh, very, very soon you'll start to hear announcements about that. Red Hat obviously um, is very passionate about open source. Uh, and Quay uh, falls into, into that category um, of being a product that we want to make sure that the community is uh, keenly involved with. And so if you're interested in the open sourcing initiative, um, if you want to get involved, we'd really love to have uh, as many people as possible helping out, uh, looking at Quay, giving us suggestions and contributing. Um, we've stood up a Google a group there, Quay SIG. You can uh, get on that. The, the URL is probably a little hard to read, but these slides may be available later. So that's just a real quick uh, overview of Quay, what it is, how Red Hat provides it, uh, and what it was built for. Um, just to kind of drill down on a couple of those areas, to get familiar with how Quay has been structured and, and the areas of focus we've put into the product over the years, um, really six key areas, right? So scalability, I mentioned um, Quay.io is running uh, really at internet scale, and, and we, uh, we, we make that really a, a major part of every decision we put into the product. How, how, is, how is any feature going to affect the scalability of the overall product? One of the real benefits of running Quay.io is that we have a really fertile ground to test Quay at scale before our clients get their hands on it. So we can actually make sure that the containerized version that, we, that people run on premise is the same bits that have been run um, uh, by, by large scale um, users on the internet. There's a huge focus on security as well in, in the Quay product. And one of the most visible areas of that is a piece of functionality that does vulnerability scanning. So there's another open source project called Claire that we bundle in. And so Claire is pre-integrated into the Quay product. When you upload a, uh, an image into the Quay registry, uh, you automatically get vulnerability scanning. So we'll tell you if there's any known issues with that image. And then if, if things change over time, you get a real-time view of, of the uh, of, of the, the, the vulnerabilities on your container image. So security's big. Um, builds have been a big part of Quay.io as well, as well as Red Hat Quay. So being able to integrate with existing build infrastructure like Git, um, also having its own built-in build infrastructure at Quay.io where you can give us a Docker file and we'll create the image for you within our platform directly. So, so fairly powerful stuff. Um, the, the content distribution, um, 
discussion is really around how we as Quay, both for on-premise as, as well as for Quay.io, provide global distribution of, of container images. And we're going to talk a lot about one of those things today, repository mirroring. Um, but we've got uh, features built into Quay to make sure that if you've got Quay installed in one location, we can get your content distributed out to other regions very easily uh, using the tools of the platform directly, not having to do a lot of work yourself. Quay's been, uh, by, by its nature, extremely integratable. Um, so it's been designed with an API first mentality. Um, most of the things, if not all the things you can do in the UI, you can do through APIs. And we have customers that do a lot of automation through the UIs, uh, to the APIs. Um, we've also done a lot of work to do authentication integration and authorization integration with things like Google, GitHub, and LDAP. Um, so um, you should be able to take Red Hat Quay and put it into your existing on-premise environments and integrate with um, a vast majority of the um, identity management systems you have. Um, lastly, I'll just call out the access control. So again, Quay has a strong focus on ensuring that people get just the information that they're allowed to have. Uh, and this speaks to the fact that we do run this at scale. Um, so access control, RBAC, authentication um, is all built into the platform. So you can set up um, organizations and teams and users in whatever combination you want that makes sense for your business. So again, just a really, really quick view of what Quay is and some of the design considerations we've uh, thought about over the years as we've, we've built out the product. What I want to get to now is really the, the new 3.1 features um, and to go into those details. So in 3.1, as I mentioned, we, we just shipped this a few weeks ago. Um, a couple of real uh, marquee features, probably the, the biggest marquee feature uh, which we're going to show you in a few minutes is repository mirroring. And so repository mirroring, uh, I'll get into more details about that, but this effectively allows you to sync images between individual repos across registries. And that registry doesn't even have to be Quay. Um, so there's a, there's a bunch of use cases there, which we'll get into. Um, the setup operator um, is a feature that we've rolled out in 3.1. This is actually um, an operator that was built by our, um, our field team, our consulting team. Uh, and it was built in conjunction with one customer. And uh, we've been using it on the engineering side pretty heavily in our own environment stand-up um, and, uh, and testing environments uh, to automate how we get Quay installed uh, on a Kubernetes cluster. It's, it's, been, uh, it's been pretty cool to see that evolve. Um, and that's available. I'll get into that in a little more detail in a second. Um, we've also added the ability to create read-only repositories. And so this is a new feature where we've added state to the repositories themselves. And you can indicate uh, what state you want the repository to be in, and you can change that state over time. I'll get into some more details on that. Um, the last thing we're rolling out with 3.1 is support for um, OpenShift container storage, uh, and specifically Nuba. Uh, you may or may not have heard of Nuba, uh, which is a company that Red Hat acquired a little while ago. We've brought that technology in-house. Nuba provides a distributed, effectively a distributed S3 storage environment. And so um, if you're familiar with how Quay uh, uh, handles storage on the back end, we, um, we typically advocate using an object storage layer like S3. And so Nuba is now a supported layer to do um, a geographically distributed S3 environments effectively that are kept automatically synchronized. So um, pretty, pretty interesting stuff. And that's a space that we're just announcing support for. Um, you're probably going to see more and more um, uh, work coming in that direction as well over the next few Quay releases. Talk about each of the, the, the three that I mentioned before in a little more detail. So the setup operator, as I mentioned, this is a, an operator that you can get today. It's on the, um, the community of practice site there at that URL. Um, this is an operator that was built um, by our consulting team and it was designed to give you really a, a single touch delivery of a working Quay environment with Claire um, on, a, on, a open, on an OpenShift cluster. Um, and so it does everything for you. You can get a very simple out of the box environment with all sensible defaults. You can also go in and you can modify the custom resource to, uh, for example, uh, use a, an existing Postgres database you may have in your environment. Or, um, or other sorts of um, overrides you want, you don't want the operator to provision. But if you just want to get a standalone environment, it's really, really good at that. Um, we have rolled this out as a dev preview, um, and that's primarily because um, it is pretty new. Um, it's still being maintained by the community. Um, we are looking to bring this into the Quay product and have it maintained by engineering. So we'll quickly be rolling this into a tech preview and eventually a GA feature. 
I'll talk about repository state as well. So uh, we, we now support three different states on each of your repos. So prior to 3.1, um, we had a single state for all repos. We now call that normal. Um, so if you don't do anything uh, when you install 3.1 or upgrade to 3.1, all of your repositories are marked as normal state. Uh, but now what you can do is you can indicate that they are either a mirrored repository or a read-only repository. Uh, for a read-only repository, it, it does what you'd expect. It effectively allows you to lock that repo for updates. Um, this is pretty handy for uh, repos. Maybe you want to archive them away. You don't want people to be able to change them, um, or you want to have something where it's uh, temporarily um, just frozen. You can do that now by just marking them read-only. Uh, mirrored um, is a state that you can also indicate. Um, and when you indicate your repository is mirrored, you actually can go in then and configure how the mirroring is going to take place. We'll look at that in a minute. Uh, but one of the key things about a mirrored repository is that you cannot push into a mirrored repository. Um, by definition, it is mirroring from a source. So we don't want people to be able to push uh, content in um, on the side. So just a, just a, just a point there to, to point out. So let's talk a little bit about what repository mirroring is and, and how we've built it. So um, there's a new tab on the on the UI that you'll see here around setting up a repo uh, a repo mirror. Uh, this tab will show up. Um, the contents of the tab will show up when you when you set the repo mirror to mirror uh, repo status to mirror. Um, what we've done is we've used the Quay Worker Framework to basically create um, workers that will do this uh, mirroring for you. And you can see the screenshot on the left, just some of the fields you can put in there. So you can put in re registry information, how you want to connect to that external registry, um, what repo name you want, um, uh, what robot account you want to use to write into your Quay environment. Um, if your repo, your mirroring is private, you'll need a robot account for that. Um, and then what's really interesting is you can specify a, a tag pattern. So it's effectively like a glob of tag information that you can give. Uh, it's not a full regular expression, it's more just a, of a glob. Um, but you can basically give a pattern around just those tags you want. So, for example, you could repo mirror just production um, tags. Uh, we are using, I should just call out as well, we are using Scopio, which is another uh, project that Red Hat's pretty, um, pretty strongly backing around how the data gets moved between environments. So that was a, that was a really nice synergy there with the Scopio team. I, I want to just spend a minute to clarify how repository mirroring as a feature lines up with the geo-replication feature in Quay. So if you're familiar with Quay already, you know we have a, a feature called geo-replication that's been around for a while. Um, repo mirroring doesn't um, deprecate that feature. It doesn't replace that feature. It's actually a different use case. It's enhancing what we can do now. So the way to think of geo-replication is um, even though you're across geographies, you still have a single Quay environment and the images are being logically spread across those regions. When you are in a different region and you ask for a, a, an image that may not be locally stored in your region, geo-replication brings that image over for you automatically. So you know you're getting a local copy. Um, repository mirroring is quite different. We're not replicating at the registry level, but at the repository level. We're also replicating subsets of a repository. So we're replicating, as, you, as I mentioned before, um, sets of tags that you've defined. So it's, it's a very different use case, but it's very complementary to the geo-replication. Just a real quick table here. I won't belabor the point here, but just if you kind of look down here, you can see the differences between the two features really around with geo-replication. We're talking about sharing the global registry um, logically across different regions, whereas with repo mirroring, it's about having separate registries. So this would be, say, a Quay registry um, mirroring a different Quay registry or Quay registry mirroring, say, a Red Hat registry or Docker. Um, it doesn't really matter. The whole point is we're, um, we're, we're mirroring into Quay from a different environment. Um, also, the push um, is another key thing as well, being able to push into those uh, registries. With geo-replication enabled, I have full push ability across both sides, and replication sorts out what needs to be done. Whereas with repo mirroring, we allow you to only push um, at the source registry. You can't actually push into the mirrored registry. Okay, um, what I'm going to do now is hand over to Tom, um, and Tom is going to actually show you repo mirroring in action. So, Tom, take it away. All right, thanks, Bill. Uh, if you want to stop sharing, I will share my own screen. Yep.
right? So yeah, the repo mirroring demo. Um, I'm just gonna go over a quick use case. So I, as a customer, I wanna get the latest versions of uh, etcd. Uh, and so I've done that. I've created a repo. And I manually used uh, Docker or Podman or Scopio. I grabbed a couple images, 2.2.2 2 and 2.22-1, uh, and then quickly realized that I didn't want to keep up with that. So I had my existing mirror. Uh, again, this is the settings page for a repository when you're the owner. Uh, you can see I have a robot. And I've set up uh, event notifications so that when the images come in, they get scanned by Claire, and then I'll get a notification if there's a medium or higher vulnerability. And here's the repository state. I don't know if the drop down shows up in the recording or not, but again, as in the previous slide, there's normal, there's just a regular repo, a read only, and mirror. So at this point, I've switched it to mirror already. And we can go over to this. This is the new tab. And the mirroring feature is just that, it is a feature. So uh, in the configuration app, which is the setup tool, which sort of facilitates the ease of use of creating the config.yaml that uh, the Quay containers use. Um, there is explicitly a checkbox in there where you can turn it on. So on Quay.io, example, for example, it's using the same container image that the on-premise customers get. So Quay.io is, in fact, a Quay enterprise running at scale. But in Quay.io, we have not enabled that feature. You, when you install it locally, configure it locally, you can enable it. And it's only this tab here, the mirroring tab, will only show up when that configuration is enabled. Uh, and so just going over quickly here, you know, I've, I've specified an external repository, um, pointing to registry.access.redhat.com. Um, you see I don't have any credentials. This registry does not require credentials. If I wanted to go to registry.redhat.io, which does require credentials, I could specify them. Uh, this is the user. Again, remember Scopio behind the scenes is doing the copy for us. So it's copying, it's literally Scopio copy from the remote source to Quay on-prem. Uh, and the user that Scopio uses uh, is this robot user. Uh, I can choose whether or not I want to verify the TLS of the external re registry. Uh, for example, if I'm running a local uh, standalone registry as a developer, and I want to copy stuff from there. Uh, I may not have set up certs. Uh, the proxy, these are trickle down to environment variables, just like you'd expect running at the command line. And then we have some information here that says about the last state. So the last sync I did did in fact succeed. If the sync was running, it would give an indication of the timeout. I think it's set to three hours. This is just sort of a a safety precaution, and if you have a sync, a mirror running, and it's stopped running for some reason, uh, after the time limit, uh, the job will be picked back up. It'll be put back in the queue as available. And again, this is a config, but we allow three failures. So we'll try to sync. If that fails, there's a network hiccup, whatever, uh, you'll get two more tries. And then after that, it won't automatically run, and you'll have to come in and, for example, sync manually, which sort of resets things if it succeeds. And then there's this area here. You can see tags. And there are wildcards. So uh, in this case, I am syncing 3.2 explicitly and also 3.2. and then 0 to 9. So they'll pick up 3.2.0, .1, .2, et cetera, if they exist. Uh, the existence of the tags is not a failure. That just means that the tag doesn't exist. So we'll try to sync. We'll pull down the list of tags and compare them against this list of expressions effectively. And I'm going to switch over to the log view, just kind of to get the history. And again, the logs, this is the this tab here, the usage logs. So auditing is a big part of Quay. Um, and here, you know, this is just a demo example. So I created it today. These are the events in this repository. Obviously, in a um, 
production environment, you'd have the, the pull logs. Uh, if, the, if I change the mirror config, that information will show up here as well. Uh, so you get a full insight of, of what's happening. And you can see here, if I go scroll down, there's this load more logs. And because I have a bunch of logs, I've already clicked through that uh, half dozen times. So this is the beginning of the repo. Uh, and I see there's some blue jeans questions, but let me just get through the demo and I'll pop over back over to that screen. Um, so this is the beginning of this repo. I created it. You can see I manually pushed uh, 3.2.22 and 22-1. And that's when I decided that uh, I didn't want to do that. I'd like to set up a mirror. So I set up the mirror, uh, and then I click the sync now. And you can see my pattern here. So I naively put in 3.2 star. And if we go over to the catalog here, you can see there's quite a few inch, uh, images here. And you can also see that a lot of them I should not be bringing on premise. So at that point, um, and here's all the tags, they get pulled in, they all worked. And here, if you look in here, this is a regular push. So if I had done a Docker push or Podman push uh, directly, this is the log entry. This is the Scopio output. So I have debug logs on, so there's a little bit more verbosity here, um, but we capture the standard out and the standard error of the Scopio run. And so if there is an issue, uh, for example, if you don't have a proxy set up uh, or bad credentials, you know, haven't entered your credentials correctly or TLS is not set up, that would show up here very clearly. Uh, the goal here for the logs is to give you, the user customer, enough information to figure out why the mirror didn't work. So you can see a bunch of tags. Uh, at this point, I realized I didn't want that many tags. And I added a notification for package vulnerabilities. Uh, and then I changed the tag pattern. And you can see now I just get uh, 3.2.5, 7, and 9. And those are, and then this ran on a schedule. Of, I have it set up for every 10 minutes. It's disabled right now. You can see, You can see right here, this enabled, so I have manually disabled it. That still lets me run a sync now, but it will not run on the schedule, um, which you can see I had it set up for demo purposes of every 10 minutes. So again, uh, I've successfully gone through, and every 10 minutes this would go out and grab new images. Now if we go to Let's go to the tag history. So again, this is a true mirror. So at the beginning, you know, I have all these tags that were pulled in. Okay, but then I updated the tag pattern to, to reduce that set. And you can see that all the non-matching, in other words, the patterns. So I'm pulling explicitly from the upstream with a certain subset of tags. And any tags that don't match that subset currently in the repo will get deleted. Now, remember in Quay, things aren't entirely deleted. So there is our time machine concept. If I go over here, I'm going a little bit off script, but bear with me. I'm going to switch this from mirror back to normal. Okay. You can see my repository mirroring tab doesn't have the values anymore. All the settings are saved, we're just not exposing them. If I go to the tag history now, uh, I, I will look into this. But I thought I should see, oh, I might have to reload the page, hold on. No, I should have an, oh, an undelete. So when I switch it back to a normal mode, this should be a fully uh, regular repo with all the you know, benefits, all the bells and whistles of a regular repo. 
and maybe I'm just not remembering where how to undelete. But effectively, if I needed an emergency situation to get this specific tag, um, I should be able to come switch back to normal, come here and basically recreate this tag. And I think that is it. Uh, let me switch. So that's the end of the demo part, but uh, if you want to try it out, of course, you can go to Quite.io. You can set up a free account on Quite.io, uh, which just lets you have public repositories. Um, if you want private repos, you can sign up there as well for uh, a paid subscription. But for the on-premise, again, the Quite.io image is the same as the Quite Enterprise, so the features you see there will be available in Quay on-premise as well. Um, but again, if you go to access that Red Hat.com and products and Red Hat Quay, uh, you will be have a chance to sign up for an evaluation. Perfect. And yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for that demo. It's actually. Clarify. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Dave, just to, just to clarify real quick, it's the same bits on Quay.io, but we have not enabled mirroring Quay.io yet. So just FYI, if you want to play around with mirroring, you'll need to get the the image itself. Fair point. That makes sense. So there have been a couple of questions which Bill is, has answered in the chat, but I think they, they might be worthy of um, reading out and answering for the recording. Um, and if other people have questions, um, please do ask them in the chat or I can unmute you and, and you can ask them verbally. Um, the, the first interesting thing that, that I saw Waleed was asking about um, on-prem air grab air gapped configurations and um, is that even a possibility that you've been thinking about yet, Bill and Tom? Yeah, we, we are thinking about proper air gapped environments. Um, so it would be good to kind of drill down on exactly how that's defined for you. I think that term is defined differently by customers. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, uh, we would look at the mirroring facility as a starting point to helping with air gapped environments where you could mirror, say, from external repos outside of your company into a Quay environment um, and then utilize mirroring again internally to replicate into an environment that is protected where maybe you can write into another, you know, sort of protected Quay environment that doesn't have any external access back out to the, to the Quay that it's, that's talking to it. So I think today we could probably put a recipe together for that. In terms of features, we'd love to hear more what you what you need to support that. So, Waleed, if you want to follow up with that, you're you're welcome to. And I'll... Not Fernando had asked a, a number of questions that Bill had done. Um, maybe if you want to recap, Bill, what Fernando was asking about. Um, He was yep. Yeah, actually, yeah, so, so um, actually, Willie had asked another question I think is important to get out is just around operator mirroring. So um, he, had, he had asked if, if we supported the mirroring of app uh, registries, uh, which are typically used these days to store operators. We actually aren't. So the repo mirroring function is just for container images. It's not for app registries this time. It's something we're looking at um, probably uh, we'll probably stick with container images for the time being, um, but um, the whole discussion around the management of the app registry is something that we're um, looking at pretty carefully. And I think as we open source, it'll be good for the community to help us figure out where that needs to go going forward. I, I can turn uh, over to Fernando's questions as well. Um, so, so Fernando had asked about um, when a mirrored repo is set up, what implications that has for the container images themselves. And so his question was specifically, does he need to then um, worry about the fact that the, the from line from his Docker file is gonna change if he's building images? Um, and so if I understood your question correctly, Fernando, um, if you do set up a mirrored repository like Tom showed you, and then you've got builds happening against those images or from those images, you do need to change the from line because from Docker's perspective, it's effectively a new repository. Um, but I think there was some also some discussion about 
being able to, to do that on the fly. So maybe as a feature, having the mirrored repo be able to adjust Docker files directly. And I think what you're getting at is when you have multiple chained environments and you want to pull from additional mirrored repos, not having to manually update those all automatically. If I, if I understood I, your I question will, correctly. Yeah, and I think I, I should know too that I believe that your from line doesn't need to conclude the registry that you can config that outside. And because you have, you own the Quay on premise, if I wanted, so for example, I mirrored uh, rel seven slash etcd. Now I mirrored it to admin slash etcd, but since it's my own Quay, I could make a namespace called rel seven and have mirrored etcd right into there. So if I had a from line that said rel seven slash etcd, as long as I'm configured in that build environment, that the registry is Quay now, not registry that Red Hat that I owe, for example, then that would just I wouldn't have to change my Docker file. I could be wrong in that, but I'm, I'm I seem to remember I could do that, set up a default registry for the builds. Does that make sense? Hey Thomas, it's Fernando here. Thanks for your answers, but as I see, most developers and also Kubernetes environments, they usually have the full registry names. They usually don't work with the default registry. So I know I, I could change the default registry, but if my developers, my users aren't using it, it's yeah. no good. And yeah, there's yeah, also the fact that I would need to perform this update of the default registry in how develop the machines and how my open shift my in my Kubernetes nodes. So it's quite some work. True, true, yes. I understand. But that. thanks. It it was a clarification question, so I know I have to do that. Thanks a lot. Yeah, and if there is a solution to that, because that that's a problem that wouldn't be unique to any on premise registry, right? Like even if I manually, I don't have the automatic repo mirroring, but I just manually, you know, Scopio copy from registry that read at that IO to Nexus, it's still going to be a different uh, from line. So yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, yeah I'm it's curious really right. how, it's, how it's solved. Like, is there a solution? And that's, that's a good question. And these are questions I'd love to see uh, thread started on the Quay SIG. It's, again, it's a new Google group, um, and we'll try to get the conversations going there. Uh, also around Claire, we're going to try to get the Claire community also to um, start joining in the conversations there. But good question, yeah. Yeah, I've, I put the, the link to the Quay SIG in the, in the chat earlier on, um, and so if you'd like to join that and post questions there, that would be great. So I'm reading, is it Walid? Am I pronouncing the name correctly? Um, so this, the Quay's repository mirroring is a true mirror. In other words, we are taking the images from the upstream and bringing them into Quay. So it is not a pull through. Uh, there's no caching. There's no, no proxy X aspects in that regard. Um, in, Satellite 6's tooling, Pulp 3, which is will be in the newer version of Satellite 6, has some of those features available. I don't know if they're going to expose them in Satellite 6. Uh, the current Satellite 6 versions act very similarly to what I just described here with Quay's repository mirroring. Does that make sense? So I, I fully understand what you're thinking. For example, in OpenShift, there are image streams, which are effectively a shallow representation, right? It just has the metadata. And when you, and it's an option, when you have, when you want to access an image, it will go back to the original source and provide that. And that is not what we've set up in Quay. I fully understand the use cases. Yeah. And it's a very powerful feature, I agree. Well, perfect. I think we're at um, 
we've answered all of the questions that people have popped in. Um, I'm really going to encourage everybody to join the, the Google group, uh, and I will post this video on blog.openshift.com um, shortly, probably in the next day or so. And um, there is a mailing list that is um, basically the Google group. So um, if you can join up there, you'll get every um, get updates and invitations to upcoming events and briefings and release notices and things along that line. Um, and we'll look forward to having you as part of the open source community as well. So thanks, Thomas, and thanks, Bill, for taking the time today, and thanks, everybody, for joining us and giving us your feedback. Um, it was great to hear from you all. Great suggestions and good feedback. So looking forward to seeing people um, migrate to the new version and um, give us even more feedback. Thanks, all. Thank you. Bye.